is protein based on their levels of organization. So basically, we have four levels of organization in protein. So the levels of organization actually refers to the how the sequence or how the structure of the protein are uh, organized. Okay. So the first one we have primary structure. So primary structure is actually we, uh, we look at the sequence of the amino acid just in the linear sequence. Okay. So the key point here is a linear sequence of the amino acid. Right? Linear sequence or arrangement specific sequence okay and then the second one we have secondary so secondary when there are hydrogen bonding okay that involve in the backbone between the amino acid that one is the secondary structure okay and then there are tertiary structure so tertiary structure they focus on the interaction okay, between the side chain or R group. Okay, remember that the side chain for each amino acid are different. Okay, and then the last one, okay, uh, level quaternary. So the quaternary structure, okay, is the interaction between multiple polypeptide chains. So it means that the protein in this level they consist more than uh, two of polypeptide chains. Primary structure, that's a linear sequence, so just a linear sequence, okay? Uh, sequence of the amino acid in a linear. So there's no uh, other uh, bond or linkage other than peptide bond. They only have a peptide bond between the amino acid. For secondary structure, okay, uh, we notice here, okay, they have an alpha helix arrangement and also beta pleated shape. The different in terms of their shape, okay, the arrangement, okay, tertiary structure. Okay, the tertiary structure is uh, we look at or focus on uh, interaction between the R group. So just like trans uh, polypeptide, okay, in the tertiary structure, they have uh, uh, all proteins, they share the three superimposed level of uh, structure. Okay. You get the more on the interaction between the R group, tertiary level. Okay, quaternary structure. Okay, look at here. They have four identical polypeptide. Means that four polypeptide chain. Okay, so how these four polypeptide chain are interact with each other? So at this one, at the level of quaternary. Okay, look at the primary. So they only have. The peptide bond between the amino acid, no other bonds. So it determined by the information, the genetic code or genetic information in our DNA molecules in the nucleus. So the sequence here, okay, what is the type of amino acid at number one? Okay, what is the amino acid number 10? 90. And what is the last amino acid? 1, 2, 5. Let's say for this uh, types of uh, Protein. So it depends on in the genetic code in our DNA. So different enzyme, or sorry, different protein, they have different sequence. They have a specific. So this sequence are specific. So that's a primary structure. Okay, just a simple linear sequence of amino acid. They already have peptide one. The next okay, secondary structure. When the structure of polypeptide chain they are coiled or folded. Okay, so the folded one we call as a beta. Okay, the coil structure we call as a alpha helix, just like your uh, our structure of DNA. It's a coil. Okay, but then this one for protein. So, uh, what's uh, the bond okay, that maintain the structure? Alpha helix and beta pleated sheet. So. The coils and faults are the results of the hydrogen bonds. So other than uh, a bond between the amino acid, they also have hydrogen bonds. So these hydrogen bonds are formed between the carboxyl here and amino groups of the polypeptide backbone. Okay, uh, so that's a hydrogen bond that stable or maintain the structure in coils and force or structure okay. so 
against the mentioned about the alpha helix and beta quartet shape. Okay. So let's look at the first for the alpha helix. So alpha helix is a coil. We look at here the carboxy group. Okay, the carboxy group at this uh, amino acid. Okay, uh, form a linkage or bond, a bonded. Okay, form a hydrogen bond okay, between the oxygen of the carboxy group for this amino acid. Right, and they join with the uh, hydrogen here from the uh, another amino acid. Okay, this hydrogen atom come from the amino groups. This oxygen atom from the carboxy group. Okay. That's a formation of the hydrogen bonds in alpha helix. Okay, right. For beta pitta sheet, okay, beta pitta sheet is arranged in the um. Parallel sequence or arrangement, okay, are arranged in a parallel to each other. So this structure also held together by the hydrogen bond, or stable or maintain the structure by the hydrogen bonds. So the hydrogen bonds, okay, uh, hold neighboring strands in different region of the polypeptide chain. So the polypeptide chain will become folded, okay, form a beta pleated sheet. This structure normally they have a high resistance to stretching okay? and the characteristic because they are folded and high resistance to the stretching so it become uh, flexible and more strong compared to the other structure. Okay. Uh, next we look at for the tertiary structure. So there is tertiary structure again we look at, at the interaction between the R groups of amino acid okay so now the r groups okay the interaction between the r groups they involve the formation of the hydrogen bonds the ionic bonds hydrophobic interaction and the van der waals interaction okay and also one of the uh, covalent bond that we call as a disulfide bridge also can uh, maintain or reinforce the structure of the protein in a 3D shape, right? So this one, okay, let's say we have the structure of the protein. Again, the purple one, okay, refer to the backbone of the polypeptide. Remember that the structure of the polypeptide backbone, we have repetition of C, okay, and right the nitrogen and bond to the NCC 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 so that's the repetition of the polypeptide backbone so here okay the purple one refer to the polypeptide backbone okay now when the tertiary structure we focus more on the R group interaction so we just look at in this uh, box, okay, the green and the yellow one, also with the um, pink here. Okay. All right. So let's look at this one. Let's say this one is the R group for the amino acid number one. Okay. And then maybe this one, okay, at amino acid number twenty. Okay. And then uh, as goes along, okay, this one, okay, amino acid number hundred. So. This is a interaction okay, between amino acid number one, yes, R group, and amino acid number hundreds. So the formation okay, between this R group or interaction, they can form the hydrogen one. It's one example of interaction. They can form a hydrogen one between these two R group. Okay, and this one. Okay, Amino acid number 20 and maybe this one is uh, amino acid number 70. Okay, so side by side, okay, their location so they can uh, form the hydrophobic interaction here. Okay, and also the van der Waals interaction. So that's the form of uh, one type of uh, R group interaction between the amino acid okay, in terms of their side chain or R group. Same goes for this one, they form a disulfide bridge. Okay, let's say this one, amino acid number 80 here. Okay. And this one, amino acid number 150. 
Okay, example one, five four. So that's the from the interaction between the R group. So we have also example for the ionic bond between these two R group of uh, amino acid okay, ionic bond. So that's how the interaction between the R group are occur in the uh, tertiary level or tertiary uh, structure. Right now, the uh, quaternary structure. So quaternary, the results when the two or more polypeptide chains okay, that are form of protein molecules. Example here, we have collagen. So collagen is one type of fibrous protein. They consist of uh, three polypeptides. Okay. So uh, the other example, we have hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a, a type of globular protein. It consists of four polypeptides. So this one is three polypeptide for collagen. Hemoglobin, four polypeptide. Okay. So the, this one, okay, the structure of collagen, three. Three means that one color differ or code for one polypeptide chain. Red one, blue, and the green. So we said they have three. So the arrangement or the uh, structure is more like a rope. Okay, they are twisted between the polypeptide chain. Okay, collagen. For hemoglobin, it consists of beta subunit polypeptide chain and alpha subunit. But they have two alpha subunit and two beta subunit. So they are interact together. Okay, and then it will form a global protein. Okay, and this one we call as hemoglobin. So I'm sure that all of you are familiar with hemoglobin. Okay, inside our red blood cells, they are very important for the transportation of uh, oxygen gas. Okay, as well as CO2, right?